Hi folks. <laughs> I haven't been doing this for very long. It's a crack second time. But the stage is bigger than the last time. <laughs> Onwards and upwards. <laughs> Great day, everyone here. Tell the people you want to become a comedian is kind of like coming out of the closet for you. It's a bit stressful. I said to one of my friends, I want to become a comedian. And at my stage in life, People don't want to become fucking comedians. They want to become CEOs. They want to become managing directors. They want to become supervisors. It's not me. I want to become a fucking comedian. Yeah? Um, so she kind of looked at me and she just says, Oh, you want to become a clown? <laughs> Confidence to the fuck. But as I said, it's a bit like coming out of the closet, it's very nervous. All the slagging off these little bit of gay boys, I'm a lame and holy sexual Since I was about six months old. My mother, when I came out to my mother, I was about 21 years of age, and I said to her mum, I have something to tell you. And my mum was kind of a bit sarcastic, so she was like, oh, I'm ready for this, I know I'm ready for this, I know what's coming. And uh, I said, I'm proud. And she said, oh, honey, you're two and a half months premature. You couldn't even stand being inside of the back end. <laughs> so, that was my turn. Put them out of the ice. It's great to see all the ladies here, though. I have a really special relationship with ladies. Ladies are my friends. I have women friends, too, but not with these women. But ladies are my friends. and. I'd rather go out for lunch or out for dinner or out for a drink with ladies because they have more fun. I do go out with males all the time, not as much as I go out with the females. But unfortunately, men don't really know how to talk to each other properly, do they? They kind of mention football. Do you, do you like football? No, okay, wrong person to ask that question. There's a guy, he likes football. Would you talk about football when you're out? Yeah. Yeah, of course you would do. So like, they always ask me, you know, about football. And, I have absolutely no idea about football. I don't even know what the goalkeeper is supposed to do with football. That's how limited my, my um, knowledge is on the game. And um, I thought I was being really clever one night, you know, out with a load of males, and they were saying, talking about FIFA, FIFA this, FIFA that, FIFA, FIFA, FIFA. You know the way FIFA was in the news about like, three weeks ago, it was controversy about what everything that was going to happen. I did not know anything about FIFA, I had no clue. And I sat down and one of my friends said, so Paul, what do you think about the whole FIFA thing? We all hate what's going on. And I was like, I like those bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I got a minute of silence for that reaction. Like someone had just fucking died. So I do like going out with all the ladies because it's a, it's a great fun. Because, you know, ladies who lunch, you all lunch, ladies who lunch. It's very hard to find out a lady who doesn't lunch. I'd rather call it bitches who brunch. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. You know, and it starts off great, you know, the ladies are all sitting around and they're all eating their menu. And they're all looking up over the menu like this. And you see everyone else has ordered a salad, so they're like, oh, fuck, I'm ordering a salad, I don't want to be the fat friend today. You know? I get a sneaky kebab on the way home and I'm pissed. <laughs> So they're all ordering salads and eating salads and they're like, why are these great? And all the questions start, you know, how's your kids? Oh, you love the old clothes. You love your house, it's so great, thanks, pennies. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see, I decide, fuck it, let's kind of, you know, mix it up a little bit. Will anyone like a glass of Prosecco? And of course, the instant reaction is, no, 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 I have too much to do tomorrow, I can't have a Prosecco. I go on, just get the one bottle. Each. <laughs> so the Prosecco comes and the first glass is, you know, fine, they're still talking right like normally, second glass comes, still talking right like normally, grand, grand, grand. Third glass of Prosecco, but, see, Prosecco has magic qualities, doesn't it? Do you like Prosecco? Love that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it turns me into a fucking cunt. <laughs> How's right? Are you? Right? <laughs> okay, right? It does. Three glasses of Prosecco later, the bitching starts. I love it, I sit back, I do get involved, don't get me wrong. I do wrong not to, you know? But, you know, I get involved in the bitchy conversations and... The bitching starts and one girl pops up and she goes after the third glass and she says, 
see this day the devil in that dress. <laughs> This gets interesting now because all the ears just pop up like this. At least somebody starts to bitch. I was afraid to. And then the one one other girl goes, yeah, she told me she was running. She couldn't run a fucking bath. <laughs> so I'm like, she said to me she wanted a smoking hot body for the summertime. To which another girl replies, not a chance, boy. I'm going to make sure you never have a smoking hot body again if someone sets her on fire. <laughs> so it continues, it continues, it continues. And then you all fuck off to the toilet all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> but it gives me a perfect opportunity to keep filling up the recycle. Because I was like, there's no way I'm leaving this now. I'm going to order four more. This bitch is just getting way too good for me to leave. <laughs> So they all go to the toilet for about four to six minutes, which is usually the appropriate time for the old girls to go to the toilet. They come back, one's been sick already. <laughs> <laughs> so she plants herself down and I kind of say to her, would you like a glass of water? Fuck off. <laughs> I don't want to do shots. <laughs> and it's always the woman, it's always the girl that has the most children who makes that decision. She doesn't realise that she has to go home in another hour or so and face into twin baby boys and twin baby girls, you fucking idiots. <laughs> so, I order more Prosecco and they get drunker and drunker and drunker and then you know when it's time to go home because only dogs can hear them now. <laughs> because their voices are so high, they're screaming in the pub. Like, <laughs> so it's like, right, let's go home and then they all get into a taxi and go home. See you lot thought that your wives get the bus, but they don't get the taxi. <laughs> you spend all your money on taxis. So they get home and this poor girl, she's so drunk, God bless her, the one with the most kids, she can't even stand up and she's outside her front door and she's like this. Fuck. And she's trying to open the key door with her banking card. <laughs> she must think she's in a hotel or something like that. So she's shoving the bag they carry into the keyhole and she's like, fucking thing, fucking thing won't work. <laughs> the only reason she realizes the bag they carry is because the handbag falls on the floor and the key pops out and she goes, oh, oh, oh. But she doesn't blame herself, she goes, fucking key. <laughs> Stupid fucking key. So what is it about? What is it about women who go out and get really drunk and then they go home and then, you see, I, I can say all this because, you know, I'm half woman, so. Don't slide me off. So she gets into the house and she decides, right, I think I'd like a bit of sex. <laughs> so she's shaking off her shoes like this, singing away, she's in great form now by the way, and she's shaking off her shoes and she's like, singing whatever song, rhythm is a dancer or something. <laughs> and she's shoving it off and she's like, hey, 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 hey. and she bounces upstairs, bounces the door open, Bounces the leg over her husband and completely bounces off the other side of the bed. <laughs> taking her side table with her. And all its contents. The clock, the lamp, the phone, the four mugs and the three glasses. The dirty cow. <laughs> she has a her house. She pumps her head off off the dress and she lies on the floor her husband's freaking out she's like for fuck's sake did you ever have to get yourself to that mess what is the story with you she starts crying he pulls her into bed in the meantime she never told him she got a kebab on the way home out of a pram on some side roads don't ever buy a kebab out of a pram folks especially when you've got loads of shots so she's lying in the bed and she just goes She can't go to the toilet, so she's trying to find something to get sick into. So the only thing she can find is a fucking hot water bottle under the pillow. So she takes the hot water bottle and she's like, They're the two hardest things in the world. Number one is rocket science. And number two is getting a fucking cork out of a hot water bottle. Quick enough that you can vomit into it. So she's there trying to get it in too late. But let's face it, vomiting into a hot water bottle is like kind of trying to vomit into a keyhole, really, because it's just not going to work. 
So she's thrown away to the fuck out of the water pocket because she can't move and it goes all over her full fur covering and her hot water pot and her husband's on the floor trying to pick up the four mugs and the three glasses as she's dropped. The two baby boys are screaming in the bed beside her. The two other kids are crying in the other bed. She used to be up in two hours, her alarm goes off an hour later, she's still throwing up. She's like, I'm never fucking doing this again. Never. She texts me at two o'clock that afternoon and she says, I'm never, ever, ever, ever going out with you again. Because I'm sick. She's sleep. I was like, oh, I'm fine. I've got about nine hours sleep. I didn't get up by two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <don't work> on <laughs> One last thing. They always say do something that you fear in life, don't they? Every day if you can. I've never been on top of a horse in all my life. So I decided it would be really good idea for me to go horse riding, okay? Now, as a gay man, you know, and as somebody who is uh, trying to be a comedian, it's hard not to tell jokes, it's hard not to be funny all the time. So the, the riding instructor, very serious man, very, very serious, he couldn't, he couldn't take a joke with him because he just wouldn't get it. So he said, Paul, Today your horse, his name is Willie. <laughs> 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 he said, what we're going to do is we're going to go over there. We're going to take Willie out. <laughs> then we're going to give Willie a little rub down. <laughs> then you're going to ride Willie. <laughs> Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then you're going to give me a little wash. <laughs> so I didn't bother, I just went home. I didn't know how to answer because he was too fucking serious. <laughs> but it's nice to listen to me and I was very nice.